You ready for some of the best fitness information you've ever heard of in your entire life? You're at the right place. This is Mind Pump. By the way, here's the giveaway for today's episode. MAPS Strong. This is a muscle-building, metabolism-boosting, performance-enhancing, strongman-inspired workout program. We're going to give it away for free to one of you lucky viewers. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Uh, subscribe to this channel and turn on your notifications. If we pick your comment, we'll notify you and you'll get free access to Map Strong. Also, we're running a sale right now. Here's what's going on. We've put together three workout bundles, one for beginners, one for in intermediate people, and one for advanced people. Each bundle includes nine months of exercise programming, all planned out with video demos, workout blueprints, everything. Okay, so you can pick one of those bundles. They're all discounted heavily. You can find all of them at mapsjanuary.com. Also, if you just want to try one program, you've heard about MAPS, not sure which one to try, start with MAPS Anabolic. It's the flagship program. That one right now is 50% off. So we put that one on sale half off. Very, very low commitment. It's got a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you want to check that out, go to mapsred.com and then use the code JANUARY50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. All right, everybody, uh, it's time for some honest truth. Obesity is a choice. Ooh. I know. I know. That's, ooh. ooh, I can hear a pin drop on yeah, that one. Yeah, I know. <laughs> now, I do, I do want to say this first. Wow. Before, before we get into it, um, that doesn't mean it's not uh, super hard to deal with. That doesn't mean that oftentimes the cards aren't stacked against you. That doesn't mean that there are easier and harder situations. Um, and I would even say- And that people don't, and it's not that we shouldn't deal with it with empathy understand, and understanding. But yeah. what I said is very true. Uh, being obese is largely, very much largely a choice. Do you think there are exceptions to the rule? Very, very little. It, it, medical exceptions- Like less are, than 10%, less than 5%, less than 1%. Less than 1%. Less than 1%. Mm, yeah, it's a very, very small. Now, there's a, a range of sizes that people can come in, genetically speaking, I'm talking about obesity. I'm not talking about uh, you know 15 pound difference between one yeah. person and another person, but rather the 30, 40, 50, 60 plus pounds of body fat that we see now that it's so commonplace. And it, and I know that the arguments, oh my God, this genetics are to play, and it's so, and you know that's not quite true. If you just go back 150 years or so, for example, there's the famous pictures of. Circus back in the day, circuses used to have what are called freak shows, and they stopped doing these because they're you know kind of taking advantage of or poking fun at things that I don't think we should. Yeah, deformities and like yeah, that, yeah, and it was terrible, right? We'd have like the bearded lady or or you know the crab claw kids with you know deformed hands, and a common one in circus freak shows was like the circus what they would call the circus fat man or fat woman, and if you look at these people, they have we have pictures of them at the turn of the century. They were, these people would not, they wouldn't turn any heads today. They were like 400 pounds or something. Right? 300 maybe yeah. pounds. And today they wouldn't turn any heads, but they were so big at the turn of the century. You know, you're talking about like, you know, 1890s or 1900 that people paid money to look at them because mm -hmm. it was so wild and so odd. And we didn't evolve. We don't evolve so quickly that all of a sudden our genetics change so rapidly that now being obese is something that we don't have control over. Um, it does. It just doesn't well, work that way. I think culturally we've normalized it so much now that um, yeah, that you don't. I mean, that's why I think that that cuts through so hard. Yeah. Right. Is because it's we're getting so much information about you know what 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 it is that is actually like uh you know something that is causing you to have this you know um obesity this this disease this is not you know your fault like you're a victim of this uh you know instead and and and, and to be fair like a lot of it is wrapped in with trauma and so there's there's a lot to unpack there it's not like an easy no. thing to address totally and, and we, you know there's lots of empathy it needs to be uh you know, given to, to people in that state, but it should be an empowering message that you can, uh, you can choose to, to really address it. That's, that's a hundred percent accurate. Um, you can have the, empathy and be honest. Actually that's true, it. true empathy and love is honest. That's right. It's not lying, uh, but it doesn't, it's not being a jerk. Right. So what I'm not saying is obesity is a choice. Uh, so, you know, 
so you know, stop uh, complaining and just go take it or whatever. And it's all no, no, no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> it is a choice. It's hard as hell. Mm -hmm. But one of the worst things that we did around obesity with popular messaging and the fitness industry is partially to blame, but popular media in general is mostly to blame is the disempowering message that it's not your fault, that mm -hmm. you have no power, I should say. You have no power over it. What a terrible message that we Awful sold message. people. Now, why is that message, why is that the popular message? Because the- it sells. 100%. The, right. the, the personal responsibility empowering message doesn't sell bullshit products. <clears throat> it just doesn't. If I'm here trying to sell you a product, and I say to you, hey, look, you know, your choices and what you choose to eat and how you're active and your relationship with food, that's largely what will change this. You're not buying anything from me. But if I say it's, it's not, not your, your fault, fault. Yeah. it's your genetics. Oh, my God, we got this pill, though, that'll fix it. You're going to buy what I have to sell. If I'm a politician, uh, I am not going to get elected on a message of, hey, this is in your power. Here's things you can do. I'm going to get elected by saying it's not your fault. There's nothing you can do. But if you elect me, I'll fix it for you. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's this terrible, terrible message. And then what clouds it are assholes and jerks that like to point out the, I guess, the folly in obesity. The problem is when you're, uh, when you're obese, your challenges are, are out in display for everybody. Right. So if you're an alcohol, if you're a functioning alcoholic or drug addict or gambling addict or, you yeah. know, we sex could be addict. Operating or, the same room and not know. You wouldn't know. I, I can't look at someone walking down yeah, the street yeah. and be like, wow, look at that shitty husband or bad person, right? I, I don't know. I don't know that. But it's I could look at someone who's 80 pounds overweight and say, oh, they, they have challenges with exercise and nutrition. I think and, that's why it's such a sensitive topic, right? Totally. There. That's exactly why. Because it's not it's like you can't um you can't hide it the same way that you can hide other conditions totally. or issues, right? So, the, you know, it's weird, though. It's like, I don't think that statement, I mean, I was kind of teasing you about my reaction um, because I know that there's it'll trigger somebody. Uh, but the truth is that, that just 20 years ago, that wasn't like a, that, there was no debate around that. There's a whole that. lot of controversy there. Yeah, there was yeah. no, but it, because this, the, this uh, idea of um, health at any size, uh, that movement and that, you know, you know, uh, demonizing trainers or health professionals or fitness people that are talking about obesity is like fat shaming. I think because of that movement in that direction, it becomes like this ooh taboo conversation. It's like it, it's not. It's pretty straightforward, actually. Yeah, it's, you know, it's like, and it, and it, and it again, I can say it without, um, without it being that I'm 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 shaming you for it. Like I have I have tremendous empathy. I mean, majority of the clients that I help most of my life struggle with this in one way or another. It's the reason why what we do, what we talk about is not the X's and O's most of the time. It's about mm -hmm. behavior stuff. Mm -hmm. right? 100%. And, and we, why we recommend that people go, if you, especially if you battle with this and you are uh, morbidly obese, that you see a therapist because there's normally uh, a root cause of this. And it's not just thermo law of thermodynamics. That's the, that's of course the, the science behind why we got in this situation, but it's not the, the, the true mechanism that has caused us yes. to go down this. And so I think you can say those things and, and also still have empathy. Look, uh, simple does not mean easy. Okay. Climbing Mount Everest, uh, I mean, technically speaking <clears throat> requires putting the right foot in front of the left. That's simple. It. Yeah. <laughs> Right? It's simple, but does that make it easy? No, it's hard as hell, right? Um, stopping st stopping an alcohol addiction. Simple. Don't stop drinking alcohol, right? Does that make it easy? No. Obesity is a challenging issue, uh, but the, the formula is simple. And the problem is a lot of people in fitness, they understand that obesity is a choice from that perspective, and they treat simple as easy. Well, you're just lazy, or yeah. you're just, yeah, whatever. No, 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 no. It's challenging and it's hard, but that also doesn't mean that it is a choice that you're making every single day and your choice can be to move in one direction or stay on the path that you are, but you have to empower yourself first. The problem, the challenge with being empowered is it requires the responsibility and the understanding that you have control. Mm -hmm. And that's a hard thing to do. It, it's a hard thing to look at your life or your situation, something that's causing you so much pain, it's very hard to sit down after, I don't know, 15 years or maybe your whole life of having this pain and saying, oh man, a lot of this is my, is my fault. Like there was a lot of things I could have done that did, I didn't do, or there's a lot of things I did 
that contributed to this. That's a very painful realization. Mm -hmm. But if you don't make that realization, it, nothing happens, right? Nothing will ever happen for you. So, and the, part of the reason why, Adam, I think the messaging around obesity has started to move in the direction you were saying is because we're getting to the point where a majority of people in modern societies are obese. Mm -hmm. And now when most people are obese, well, the popular messaging now is, hey, leave me alone. Don't tell me it's fat shaming. And uh, and I uh, know it's not, it, it's not a, a choice and it's not my fault type of deal. Mm -hmm. uh, because I get it. You don't want to hear it. You just don't. You ever try to talk to somebody who's got a real issue with some form of addiction or dysfunction and they don't want to hear it yeah you ever try yeah. it's 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 just a it's a losing battle and they don't want to hear it and they don't hear it and well, it's they don't hear anything you have to say yeah especially now because there's so many um different narratives out there to glom on to that will help kind of um you know feed your uh your justification of of the you know well this is the the identity that now you've you've uh, assumed so now this is who i am and this i'm proud and you know and there's all these other things that kind of go in that direction that you can get behind and it's it's a whole industry it's a whole industry of um feeding you bullshit in a sense uh to make you feel better uh, which, you know, is something that everybody kind of struggles with that right now because there's so much information out there that you can really get whatever it is you're looking for. But what what is really, truly healthy for you? What is really, truly will feed you, um, you, you know, sustenance that will will then move you in a direction where your body is going to benefit from it and, you know, everything else will now, transpire? I, th I think that money and marketing is is largely responsible for this messaging but i also think that the fitness industry is very responsible too yeah. i think it's a it's an overcorrection from the shitty job that we've done for yep. the last you know three Since four decades beginning. yeah we just i mean and look at how we still we still do it we still you know uh put bodies up there to show transformation uh, pictures we still promote this motivation hype extreme uh ways of training and glorify it with shows like the biggest loser that's and right so i i think that uh and, and i think that's the where i have empathy for the the people that kind of side with that messaging of health at every size and kind of are pushing back where i understand it is that it's it, it's a correction from the other extreme. It's more a rejection of the terrible right. messaging yeah. and all the crap diets. You know, here's a here's another controversial fact. Uh, people who struggle with obesity will have more success hiring a therapist than they will following a diet or hiring a lot of trainers. Mm -hmm. That's the truth because a lot of this is not is not due to the fact that you don't know what's healthy and what's not healthy. It's it's more around the behaviors. And what's driving it, and how you feel about yourself. And, and by the way, too, uh, we're, we're talking about obesity right now, but that is—I think that's um, this is uh, connected to to anything that you you struggle with in life. Whether anything be, that, you, that you use, whether to it be hurt financial, yes. whether it be uh, the way you talk to and communicate to your your spouse or your your partner, the way you treat your children, the way you interact with uh, your peers, like. So much of this is rooted in in the way you were raised or the trauma that you've been through, and then this is just a reflection of that. It's just another one of those. This 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 person has now just chosen to cope with it through food and overeating or lack of exercise and movement or the combination of yeah. the two of them. But they're they're no worse or better than somebody who, like you were kind of alluding to early on that you know, yeah. beats their wife or freaking get screams at their kid or, you know, gambles like crazy and loses all their money. Like all these things are, are issues that are, are, are rooted in something deeper than the, the, the actual mechanism that you're, yeah. that everyone's being able to see. Yeah. I, I'm sure there's, you know, we have a large audience. Like if you're watching, listening to this, raise your hand if you're perfect, right? I can tell you right now, nobody is going to raise their hand, raise your hand. If you have a challenge with something that tends to cause you damage or trouble in your relationships or your own health, right? Uh, everybody's raising their hand. So obesity is visible and it's easy to pick on. And if you're a kid, you get picked on for it and you feel not attractive. And then the marketing and messaging is, so I get it. I get it, right? We're in an environment, we're, we're in a world now where markets have done such a damn good job of giving us what we want. And what mm -hmm. we've told markets that we want is fast, cheap, tasty food. So that's what we have a lot of. And markets, we've also told markets what we want is I don't want to move. 
I, I want to relax all the time. So lots of products and services are, I mean, DoorDash exploded because uh, people like to sit at home. They don't. I don't even want to drive down the street to get food. I want it to come right to my door, right? Yeah. At some point, I'm sure there's going to be a service where they come to your couch. I don't want to walk to the door. <laughs> I mean, I'm, we're laughing, but uh, I wouldn't be totally shocked if there was something like that, right? So yeah. it's an environment that's challenging. It requires a completely different approach, but that does not mean that it's not, uh, that obesity is not a choice, that it doesn't come from choices that you make on a daily basis. And so that's the thing that we need to understand. We have to start there. We have to start with the, I have a lot of power. Oh, by the way, I'm not saying everybody is going to get shredded. We're all going to look like super mo That's not what I'm saying. Okay. I'm so I'm talking about just generally healthy. Okay. Not, uh, uh ex you know, obesity or extreme in the other direction. I'm just talking about general health, but it starts with people saying, I have a lot of control and power over this. But boy, is this hard. I don't know what to do, and I don't know what that looks like, but I do know that I have a lot of control and power. And you have to start there. You can't start with, I have no control and no power over this, and I'm, I'm, uh, this is, I am, all of this is a result of things out of my control. So, like, where do you go from there, right? Well, do you, do you think, right. because obviously it's becoming the norm, like you're saying, yeah. like, it's more and more the majority is, is becoming, uh, you know, they're, oh, they're, the majority is already overweight. Yeah. And well, Obese, I think, is at like almost 40%. 40% is yeah. what I think I read last. So based off of that, um, do you predict that that will be a motivator to drive traffic into gyms? Or do you think that it'll become like, oh, well, this is just how I am. Why I even go to the gym and work out? So do you think it's going to impact gyms and the fitness space in a positive or a negative or a, 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 net, a net, you know, net zero from it? It, it depends. And here's what I think. I mm. think if gyms want to be successful, um, I'm glad you brought that up, by the way, because I wanted to talk about gyms also on some other topics. But along with lines of what you're saying, I think if we start to talk about fitness and its benefits on mental health, mm. I think we'll have way more success. And stop focusing so hard on the physical, visible changes that it, it provides, which it does. It does yeah. make you look different. It does... You know, you look healthier, more fit, more muscle, you know, less body fat, all that stuff. But if you ask anybody, I swear to God, go ahead, talk to anybody who's worked out consistently for more than 10 years and ask them to list the top five reasons why they like to exercise and work out. I guarantee you one of the top five, if not number one, is the mental benefits. Yeah. I guarantee you. It's not the it makes me look good and I like being buffed and I like looking whatever. It's the mental health effects. And I think that's what we need to focus more on. Could you imagine if people worked out just because they knew it made them feel better mentally and emotionally? You imagine the side effects of that and, and what oh, that would look like? Just a happier society? Oh, I would love that. Oh. It's just like, yeah, I think a mental part of it is a huge factor. And I, I, I think with this information, like we just saw one study that finally came out, you know, that, that, proves that, uh, you know, lowering your body fat will help, you know, be more resistant towards, uh, any kind of diseases out there, any kind of illnesses, you know? And I think that, uh, for some reason we just, we forgot that or, or like the general population just ignored that fact that's been around, like we've known that and we didn't need a study to tell yeah. us that. Uh, but apparently we do. And so I think with more of these studies finally like kind of emerging uh, and showing people and proving people that if you do make better choices with your food, nutrition, and you move more, you get exercise, you get sunlight. Uh, you know, you're going to, you're going to be healthy. You're going to thrive. You're going to be energetic again. Hopefully that's the push then to put yeah. people. Back I mean, that's the, the hope, but the truth is, you know, media is in the, the business of attracting eyes and viewers and nobody wants to hear that. That's work. Well, yeah, it's not but, sexy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it, it is. Sell. You know, it, but the other option does, isn't working. No, you yeah. got to make people. The, uh, the, the pill <laughs> form is not working. No, no. You yeah, but I almost feel like the come back messaging around giving those people hope that they won't have to do anything about it. Like you know, it'd be a better headline, and that will get more attention and more views and more people talking about it. Is you know, uh, Pfizer comes out with a pill potentially that could reduce body fat by yeah. you know two percent if you take it every single day for the next five years. Like that's more sure. interesting. And we'll get more attention than all the things that you're well, saying think, right now, too, which is unfortunate. I think, too, when you market fitness uh, so heavily on on the visible changes, the physical like aesthetic changes, that a lot of it 
causes a lot of shame self, and hate <laughs> within yourself. Very powerful short-term motivator, by the way, right? If you hate yourself and you feel disgusting, you're likely to buy a gym membership or buy supplements or do something in the short term. Terrible long term. The long term, it fails because at some point you get you just can't you don't want to hate yourself anymore, and so you you end up stopping. But a very short term, a very po uh, powerful short term motivator. But I again, I think telling people focusing on the visible physical changes is going to motivate people the wrong way. I think if we because here's a fact, and this is one that is just it's profoundly under, um, I guess, under delivered, under representative, uh, maybe misunderstood the effects that movement and exercise have on mental health are pro there's no drug that we have on the market that comes close. Mm -hmm. It's at least as effective in the short term as very powerful SSRI drugs in the long term. More effective. There's no. T you don't build a tolerance. It actually keeps getting better, right? Mm -hmm. Drugs tend to not get better after a certain period of time. You have to change drugs. There's other side effects. Mm -hmm. The side effects of the mental health effects of exercise are you get leaner, stronger, more energy, hormone balance, like all these positive, incredible things. Um, so I think that's the message that we need to push a little bit, which is part of the reason why I said in a previous episode why I think we're about to see an explosion in gym memberships. I think people kind of are feeling that. I don't know if they're super aware of it, but they're feeling like, I got to get out and get moving. Yeah. And then combine that with, which I think is a negative thing, the new fear around, uh, I don't know if you're seeing the messaging around obesity and COVID, but that's really starting to Well, that's the explode. thing. It, it, I just, I feel like, you know, at some point people are going to go back to the grassroots of like mm -hmm. what we were initially trying to do for improving our, our overall health. We all knew what that looked like. Yeah. It's not a mystery, you know, it's just been bombarded mm -hmm. with this new thing that came about out of nowhere. And all of a sudden now pharmaceuticals yeah. are the only answer. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't yeah. make any sense yeah. to me. Step one, uh, realize that you have a lot of impact and control over it. Step two, hire somebody that can coach you properly. Therapists do a damn good job. A really good experienced trainer or coach will do a a damn good job. And then step three, uh, be kind to yourself because it takes time and it's really hard. Um, and, and, and then you'll have the best mm. chances. You'll have the best chances. The problem is in the past, people are like, okay, I have control. I think, let me buy this pill, right? Or oh, let me follow this crazy diet. And then, and then, and then it fails and then they do it again and it fails. And then right. what's the message that they get? It's out of my control, right? I can't do anything about it. This is just the way it is and yeah. whatever. It's not my fault. And then you get pissed off and angry. And you go in the other direction where you're like, anybody who tells me otherwise is fat shaming me. Yeah, and you're always in a fight. Yeah. I do want to bring something up, though. And I want to switch to something a little bit more positive. And uh, I think Adam just may be the most psychic <laughs> investment stock predictor of all time. Yeah. But there's we, a, we there's, need to get him a hat or something. There's a catch to this. There's this, a weird this catch. This is actually a slide, not a fucking... No. I feel like there's been some some smart listeners that have picked up on this and have already done I hope. what you're about to say. I hope. So, okay, so you know in the movie, you ever watch a movie where there's like a genie or something and the guy gets, uh, uh, you know, says, let me give you a wish and he asks for a wish but there's always a weird catch. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, that's here's the catch, right? Adam says, we should get this stock or I need to invest in something he doesn't. It always <laughs> crushes the next day. This has happened like five times, bro. Yeah. Oh, it stings, dude. Yeah. It really does sting. This though. just happened with, uh, as of the recording of this Planet Fitness. Ye yesterday, you know, we were talking about how we predict that the gym industry is going to see a huge surge because people are just sick of being stuck at home. They want to work out. Now there's fear around COVID and being obese. And so it's like lots of people going in. And I said that on a podcast. And Adam went and thought about it and did some research. And very, I mean, smart pick. He's like, I bet you Planet Fitness is going to do really well. That would be the gym that a lot of people would flock to who aren't necessarily fitness fanatics. Maybe Lo we and should. Behold. Maybe I should buy some. We should get. Well, we didn't. And then it went up, like, I don't know, it was up 6% the next yeah. day. Yeah. They, they made a well, I had no idea that announcement was coming, right? So, obviously, had I known that in addition, I probably would have been a little more aggressive about getting us to, to buy. I mean, we bought now, right? Did we buy today? Did we get it? Yeah, we bought okay, it. Okay, so we have it now. So, I, I still think it's gonna we're going to be on a ride for a while. They bought $800 million acquisition of 114 clubs. Wow. That's what they announced. What was it? Was it a chain that was going under? Chain. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I was wondering when we were going to start seeing this. Like, obviously, we knew mm -hmm. because of COVID, there was uh, there was a lot of gyms that A lot failed. of washout. Yeah, right? So, and then there's always going to be somebody who who makes out on that. So there's some of the big chains that are that are probably doing really well. 
Uh, Planet Fitness probably being one of those. That was kind of what I thought too. Uh, uh, so I don't. This may not. This may be one of many acquisitions that we're going to see by them and some of these big chains. So yeah, because you have a few comp things uh, like combined to make the perfect storm. A lot of gyms closed down, so that means you have less competition. Uh, people have been afraid to go to gyms for a long time. I think the fear is kind of a little over. People are feeling really unhealthy. It's January. It's just historically when people go to work out anyway. Mm -hmm. And then Planet Fitness has a model that's very attractive to people in this particular situation. It's very low. To, it's very inexpensive. Eight bucks a month. I have nothing to lose or whatever. They've got lots of locations, blah, blah, blah. I don't necessarily like their model as a fitness expert, but I could see as a, from a business standpoint um, how it you know could be very valuable. So, I mean, they're poised to do well. It's also, well. I mean, most uh, brick and mortar gym businesses, the stock is, you know, on the lower end, right? They're yeah. not on, they're not on an all time low for 52 weeks, but they're kind of like a little over middle of the row, which was another reason why I liked it, right? So it's not, they're not on a high uh, because of all the, the fear of potentially, you know, gyms continuing to struggle. So that makes it also alluring, right? Is that they are, they're already in a in a lower stock yeah. position than what they previously were. So I I predict minimum they get back to their fifty two week high, and then I think they're already almost there, right? Mm -hmm. And then and then on top of that, you got the this January quarter coming. And if your prediction was right, literally what made me go down that rabbit hole was your prediction. I thought you know the more I thought about what you said, is like you know. If the CDC starts coming out and the messaging politically is, you know, advantageous to say, hey, get in and exercise and be healthy, which it seems that that's what the messaging, the direction it's heading, like you said. Mm -hmm. um, OK, who are the big, you know, who What's are the, the most obvious bridge there, too, uh, for people that don't like the gym setting or like, you know, that it seems intimidating. Exactly. Or, that was the other the, factor. The price points really low and I could just dabble with it if I want or I could back out. It's like that's. Like so my thought storm. was what Next. Sal said yep. is most likely to influence the people that are easily influenced. Right. Yeah. So yep. the, the people that are easily put, you know, the, the same people that were double masking, driving around in their car by themselves scared to death mm -hmm. and stuff are also going to be the same people that, oh my God, CDC says I yeah. need to get in there and exercise and that that's the best thing I need to do. Those are the people and they're going to be drawn to something that's cheap, that's easy, that speaks to speaks to them. I think Planet Fit Fitness was onto that model yeah, a, a I, long time I, ago. Or just yep. people who are not, who hadn't exercised in a long time and kind of started to feel like they needed to and just needed the permission. Like, oh, here's another reason. I think mm -hmm. I'm going to go do it. And it's not a big commitment type of deal so it makes uh it makes perfect sense fitness fanatics didn't stop working out no. you know what i mean they were the ones that kept going it was uh it was everybody else so it's gonna be really interesting you know it's funny too a week ago the ceo from planet fitness um said that he saw no slowdown maybe less than a week ago he saw no slowdown in their in their usage even as the new now, variant that does that mean the entire really? time or just recently in the last quarter because they had to have taken a hit or yeah no right, right now oh, okay yeah so in other words oh no january's here we're seeing no slowdown people yeah. are coming in and it's getting packed 2022 yeah it's what? been a totally shift of mind i feel i mean do you guys even i mean i feel this uh i said i think i don't know if i said this on air now i know i told you guys this i know more more of my friends and family uh have covid right now then don't yeah, like yeah. that's how how yeah. how much it's spreading right now it went like wildfire this time and yeah. in at least in my family and my circle of friends most of the like the kind of fear around it now that they've either experienced it or have someone close to them that's experiencing it seems to be really calming of down of course so remember i i have t i have hypochondriac uh, tendencies right so i I'm, I'm, I, that's something that i always deal with anyway and I try to check it, you know, so I'll get a little fearful and then I'll check it. It takes uh -huh. me sometimes a day or whatever. Well, when I got sick and I got better and it wasn't that big of a deal, a lot of my fear dissipated just because you experience it. You're like, yeah. oh, okay, I, you know, I did yeah, it. It's really it's the anticipation and the unknown yes. you know, that, that gets a lot of people. I wonder how many hypochondriacs this created over the last oh, you know, couple of years. Anxious yeah. people. People who tend to be anxious, this has not been a good two years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I brutal. tell you. Oh, brutal. Check in on your friends that are anxious, tend to be anxious. I'm telling you right now, they're, they're, they're not doing so well. It was, it's, a, it's been a tough time. Yeah. Um, and again, back to fitness and mental health. If you look across the board, exercise, across the board, exercise has, has such profound effects on mental health that if it were a drug... It would be a blockbuster, groundbreaking drug. There'd be nothing that even comes close to comparing with it. 
in terms of its positive effects. And the the it doesn't even have to be like crazy tons of activity, you know, exercise. It's just moving. It's just getting up and moving has yeah. this, you know, tremendous effect. And I think there's this compounding effect. There's the obvious physical effects that exercise has on the body, which makes you feel more mentally healthy. It's got positive physical effects on the brain and hormones. There's all that. But then there's also this side of it, which is I'm doing it and it's working and I'm choosing to do it. Ooh, that's empowering. Oh my God, and I'm doing it again. And I'm doing it again. This is a choice that I'm making. Yes. And you feel... It, it makes you feel better. It's like you this feel positive the feedback. Loop. After you make like solid, you know, choices for yourself that you know are good things for you, like you just you benefit from that uh, mentally because you, you know that like every day you're making a conscious effort and a conscious decision um, to help improve yourself, your body, your, yes. your health, and, yes. and you know, and that's something that is contagious, uh, and that's the kind of contagious you know we want to. Create. Oh, beautiful! I, but speaking of crazy fitness stuff. Did you, see, did you guys hear about this guy that uh, he, put, he put out that he was going to do a beer diet, lost a bunch of weight? Did you hear about this? <laughs> <laughs> I, this is the kind of stuff that just makes uh, me so, so This annoying. is the follow-up to, wasn't the last one like the cookie I'm diet? No, I'm going to pull it I'm up. I'm surprised that's new. I'm surprised they haven't done it's this. Like a couple, it's like a year and a half old. Oh, okay. This guy, um, an Ohio man, uh, said he's only going to drink beer to lose weight. So he's like, I'm not eating. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just going to drink beer. And he has lost 33 pounds. From doing this. <laughs> wow. All right. Yeah. No damage done, I'm sure. <laughs> no. The yeah. opposite is true going on with Katrina right now. So Katrina, I didn't tell you guys this, but Katrina uh, set a goal. So like, she's going to be mad I bring this up on the podcast because she's probably ashamed of this. But she set a goal to me. It was so funny when we were, it was like the right after our birthday or so, um, mm. she's like, I'm going to try and drink every day till the end of the year. What? And I go, What? <laughs> she goes, yeah. I just, I'm gonna, I like I'm gonna your style. yeah. I'm gonna enjoy, I'm gonna enjoy a drink every day till a till single the, drink. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, sometimes two, sometimes okay. more. Um, but, <laughs> oh, it's getting worse and yeah. worse right now. And she's like, you're not gonna get any sex because for a while. the goal, <laughs> the goal was January one. She's going completely dry, and then she was gonna to pull back. So she's one week or what are we on day eleven or something like that, right? So she's a little over a week of being dry, and like she's like, oh my god, I've already lost a bunch of weight. I'm like, well, you're holding on to so much water weight right, with that. Yeah. I said, so plus there's calories in it. Yeah. Well, no, exactly. I mean, she was on average having like two drinks a night, you know, and they're, you know, stiff drinks mixed with something, you know, mm -hmm. so and she never really needs Z-Botics or anything. I remember like dude. offering her one. Cause I was like, dude, I don't know. Cause I, I kind of go back and forth with it, but I know that if I do have, I feel so much better if I'm like going hard like that yeah. all the time. But she's like, yeah, I'm good. We're so different when it comes to that. Like every once in a while, I'll get her to take it because I try and explain to her. I'm like, listen, I know you don't get like bad. I'm like, but it'll it'll make sure that you. So she, if she knows she's having more than two drinks, she'll have the Z-Biotic. But if she's just having a couple drinks, where I'm the, it, if I'm having one drink, I'm having that. Yeah. Because one drink can mess me up. One mm -hmm. drink could mess the sleep up, can give me the headache, can make me feel crappy the next day. So that's how sensitive I am to alcohol, where she's not like that. She's really got to go hard for her to actually start to feel that. But I thought that was a really So cool. she's a weekend, nothing. Yeah, you, nothing already. And I already see like her her face looks like it's all leaned out already. And she's uh, she actually wanted to start with it. You know, this is actually an interesting or a good conversation because anytime I have something where I'm kind of coaching Katrina either through nutrition or exercise, I should always remember to bring it up on the podcast because even with all of her experience and knowledge, she still asks like good questions. Yeah. So she's getting like back into the swing of things. And now the ideal program is probably resistance training for her or starter or anabolic because mm -hmm. she's, she hasn't really been doing anything. And she was telling me, she goes, you know, I, she goes, I know I need to, I need to start on either starter or resistance because I haven't done anything. And I know you tell me that, but I just don't, you know, I, I've, I've done that like the last eight times or something like that. She's like, I just, I said, well, I said, it's not that big of a deal. I said, it's, there's nothing that says you can't start with strong or with another program that we would consider advanced. Now, do I think that it would be in your best interest to start with starter or one of those programs first? Absolutely. But you have to take into consideration your desire to go do it. If that outweighs that, if you doing a new program that you haven't done in a long time or uh, you know, in, in comparison to doing something that you feel like you keep kind of starting over or doing – then that kind of trumps it like because that makes you get up and do it because you're interested, right? Oh, it's a new workout. Oh, these new exercises right. I'm learning. So you have to factor that in. Yes, you would be better off 
following start and following the way I've taught you to follow the programs because the way we build the volume in on that and we kind of do the progressive overload for you, you'll get better results that way. But would you get better results than if you're if you're inconsistent with it and you don't do it versus following yeah. something new that you're excited about? So you have to factor that in. And so it's not that big of a deal. Follow strong and we can move you back to anabolic yeah. later on. I hope this doesn't come back to bite me, but you can do that as long as you know how to go. First off, you can't have any major uh, physical dysfunctional issues or muscle imbalances because then, then that makes a bigger difference. But if you're generally got decent movement and you don't have lots of muscle imbalances or issues, you can start with one of those other programs. You just have to know how to go easy how to, yeah. e how to ease into it, right? So start off with the lower intensity. Right. So, you know, and knowing Katrina, um, she's generally fit even when she's not working out or whatever. So she totally could. She would just have to start off a little bit less intensity and gradually. Right. It's the novelty thing that she's really yeah. leaking, seeking for, right? Because she she knows anabolic can start her like the back of her hand, you know, between having a baby, having her yeah. surgery, like being off for the holidays. She's restarted those programs so many times that she's just kind of like, over the same phase and she just wants something unique and different. And I say, and so she was, it's like, it's not a right or wrong thing. It's a better or, or, or less good thing. Yeah. Right. So I'm like, yes, that would be better for you to do that, but not the cost of your, and she can't, she, her, she reported back to me. She's like, I'm so glad I listened to you about doing strong. She's like, it's so fun because I haven't done this. I forgot all these different movements that I never do and it's challenging and it's different. And she goes, so just the fact that I'm doing cool. something different, like it's got me excited about working out every single day. Whereas, you know, I know what starter and anabolic is for me every time. So that, that, that does matter. I know we preach a certain way on the show because we're, we're always trying to give the best advice, but there's other things that you have to factor in sometime. And if you're somebody who has kind of started the same program over and fell off, started, fell off, started, fell off, and you're not motivated to do the same thing, it's okay to interrupt that with something else, even though it may not mean you'll get as good of results as fast and there is a better way to do it. There's other aspects that you have to factor in. No, so that's that's mm -hmm. why context matters so much. And that's why when you train people, it's like the answer to questions typically is it depends. <laughs> yeah. You got to look They're at everything, every right? And then right. it really depends. Right. Hey, did you guys see the news article that came out about the heart transplant? No. Oh, the pig one that I sent you. The first person you got transplanted a genetically modified heart, P pig, uh, heart. pig heart. Wait, 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 wait. Okay, did they grow the heart in the pig, or was this like a petri dish oh, heart? Oh, that's a good question, Justin. We got to find out. Maybe right. Doug could look it up. Only but because okay, so like part of me thinks that um, it you you can only grow things in a lab. Uh, I don't feel like that's translatable yet. Maybe I'm wrong uh, in terms of like it having to, you know, pump blood through and like being part of a living organism first. Oh, I hear be, what you're saying. To be translatable and accepted uh, versus like, you know, just something that's like grown in a petri dish. Yeah, that's a good point. I don't, here's my guess. I don't know the details, but my guess is it was genetically modified so that it wouldn't get rejected. Oh, okay. You know, so like they modified it so that it wouldn't get rejected by him uh -huh. um, or by humans. But that's my guess. Um, and my guess is it was in a living pig. Because I don't know how, I think growing it in a lab, like you said, would re would be a lot more challenging. So did they like CRISPR this? Like how did they no idea. genetically <laughs> modify this? What does it say, Doug? Does it say anything? They say it's a genetically modified pig heart. So that suggests it was done in a lab, but I'm trying to get down to the point where it talks about that oh so it was a success though is that the supposedly yeah. supposedly like initially at least right because he has weird desires to roll around in the mud but other than <laughs> that, like, <laughs> that's messed up dude. dude there's been so many reported stories like that though like with uh, that, animal uh, like what well, he gets the memories you know oh, that's, yeah that would be weird isn't there some theories around that though that that's he's happened? all hey babe is, is, is that like, say, like fascia like no like, hasn't that happened before where people that have had like there's been organ transplants where they like have some weird memory yeah. now all of a sudden that wasn't theirs or something weird. it was like a like a serial killer or whatever and they have these weird dark you know he's, tendencies he's all, all hey babe sudden. he's all hey babe can you put on like 60 pounds <laughs> i like it when you put on about 60 pounds you know what though it's uh first off there was one that i read where i don't remember what it was i think a man got a heart transplant met this woman and was just like something was a tr they were attracted to each other not like sexually or anything like that but just attracted to each other mm. became really good friends i read the story 
they come to find out that he had her son's heart. Her son died in a car accident. Uh, he got the heart, and they wild. felt a strange connection. Could you imagine that? Give me chills. Could I you know. imagine yeah, that? Yeah, finding that out? Oh, That's that wild. is so weird. So yeah, it looks like the pig was actually genetically modified itself. Yes. So it was a real right. pig. They modified oh, okay. the pig. See, that makes sense to me. Yeah. yeah. More yeah. so because it's, yeah, it has modified to. him to have like more human traits. I guess so. Yeah. No, I think it's so it wouldn't reject that. Well, no, I mean, dude. yeah, it's something to uh, it's make it so it'd be compatible. Pig. You go in the lab, pig and the, man. You go in the, dude, I'm telling you guys, you go in a lab and there's like all these big cylinders with like pig man. Please help me. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> terrifying, dude. What other animal? Let's let's make some predictions. What other animal? At what point do you think humans are going to use genetically modified animal parts to make them superhuman? You know what I mean? <sighs> You yeah. know, it's funny. Like I have how, orangutan. It's pets. funny oh, how oh, gorilla uh, arms. How more accurate, you know, weird sci-fi movies and shows like Star Wars are beginning. Like, like I remember, with a, like as a kid watching Star Wars and then like seeing all these creatures and animals. Yeah. And, like, it was just like, oh, that's so far fetched. Like this, it could never. But like, how much more does that seem plausible now? It's... Like that you have these kind of human-like animal-like creatures. Like if we keep crossing over and transplanting and playing with CRISPR and stuff like that, now it's like. Hmm, maybe it's well, not that far imagine, from those human monkey embryos. Yeah. Mm. Well, imagine if you could like modify yourself to have like the ability to smell like a dog or to focus on far objects like an eagle. Although I will say this, that would pose some serious challenges. I bet if if we did that, to, let's say we had the technology and could all of a sudden make you smell like a dog, it would be so overwhelming you couldn't process it because oh, yeah. you you just you don't you don't know what the hell is going on. <laughs> Of course, Doug pulls up a picture of the. Yes. <laughs> what was that? Uh, Jabba's uh, pig uh, yeah, guards? Yeah, now Boba Fett's. Those oh, security. yeah, I yeah. saw that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a security, security guards, yeah. I know, dude. You know, speaking of like news hilarious. that came out today, uh, I don't know if you guys saw um, uh, Alex Hormozzi. Oh, yeah. Did you see the news on him selling his franchise? So. Doug just read his book, right? The Hunter Million Plus. What's it called? Or what's his book? Shout Hunter out to Million him. Dollar Offers. Did you finish it or are you still in it? No, I went through the whole thing. Oh, you went through it already. Yeah, and you good. like it? I love it. If so, you're in the business of marketing, I recommend it. He's so I, okay. He's he's connected to our our buddy Jason, right? So he's uh, at NCI, and he, Jason is the one who introduced me to him before. Now I'd seen his ads pop up before, but I actually knew nothing about him. Like I didn't know well, is this guy really successful? Is he just a marketing dude? Like what's his what's his deal? And J Jason talks all about. He says he's a really great guy. So then, of course, I'm starting to follow him. I know you've talked to him now about getting on the show. So hopefully, mm -hmm. we'll interview him. We can talk more in depth. But he just sold 66% um, of his gym launch business, which is his main source mm -hmm. of income that he does. And I think he got $46 million for it. In addition to that, he still has 44% control and he's on the board. Oh, cool. Wow. Just a, what a, cra it's, it blows my mind, like how, cause just, I mean, 15 years ago when we were like in brick and mortar, like, Anybody and everybody that was making millions of dollars, you knew who they yeah, were. Yeah, we knew them, especially in fitness. It's like the, my first experience when we first met Mike Matthews, right? Like when we, I didn't know who Mike was. And then find, find out this guy's got this big old business. I'm like, how is this dude like has this massive business and I've never yeah. heard of him in our space? It's like, it's so, it's, it's more common now that we the meet or see these people like this that weren't even on my radar and they're, building businesses that are hundreds of millions it's, of dollars. It's, it's never, I mean, again, this is probably controversial to say, but it's true. It's never been easier uh, to be a millionaire as it is right now. Mm. It really has. It's really never been easier. I don't think that's a fact, isn't it? I don't it think is it's a controversial. Fact. It is a, it's I controversial because uh, uh, there's a lot of political messaging that tells people otherwise. Yeah, people want to, you know. It, a like, majority of millionaires are self-made, by the way. That's, that's a fact. Mm. The majority of people who are millionaires did not start that way, didn't inherit it. They, I think it's over 80% did it themselves. Today, you could reach more people with a product easier and cheaper than ever before. Starting a business is less expensive, requires less capital, less risk than ever before. Getting your product to people has never been easier than it is today. Uh, companies like Amazon didn't exist and the internet oh, didn't exist. Efficiency is through the roof. Social media yeah. didn't exist, which social media for all of its negatives, there's also a lot of positives with it. So it's a it's a great time if you're trying to, you know, become successful. It's there. It's there if, if you if you want it.
Yeah, no, so it's it is. it's it is. I, I mean, that's why I mean NCI is blowing up. Watching Jason and what they're doing, like I mean, more and more. I think there's a little bit of hesitancy and fear from some people that are aspiring to be trainers or moving that space, thinking that it's oversaturated because you're you're seeing the ads, you're seeing the people posting all day long. Mm. So you have this feeling of like, oh, everybody's doing this, everybody's mm. selling fitness, everybody's into it. But it's to your point, it's just it's so easy to get started that just anybody can do it. It doesn't mean that it's oversaturated and there's not room to, to scale a massive business, you know, well, like someone well, like Alex. So just much did. room yeah, for that. Training people or coaching people not in person. So we say virtual now, but just to say not in person, that existed 20 years ago, 30 years ago too. It was just super small. It was not a business. It was very, very tiny. There were some people that did it through the phone or through – letters, I guess, or whatever, uh, maybe email when it first started. Today, uh, coaching and training virtually is, I would say, one of the fastest growing segments of personal training and coaching. Uh, one of the things that uh, NCI says is that one of the biggest mistakes online coaches make is they they emulate like exactly what in-person training is like, which is a mistake. It's yeah. not the same at all. Yeah. It's actually you can't just train them once or twice a week, or you know, connect yes. to them once or twice a week, and then not. There has to be more follow up and more connection and more things that complement it. It's different. It's a different. Yeah. It, although yeah. it's it's similar in many ways, it's very different. I remember going through it like when I got into, and I I mean, if it wasn't, I mean, obviously like this is what NCI is in the business of doing, but I, I would recommend people get in-person training experience first before they even thought about doing virtually now and that's because i didn't think their businesses like nci existed to help people with that gap because i i had to lean on i didn't know about nci when i first did this, this was before even mind pump right i didn't know about that so i leaned heavily on my experience and knowledge from training people in yeah, person yeah. and i had to kind of troubleshoot my way through like okay how do i take that product and make it kind of virtual and yeah. how do I give that same type of service? And how do I scale it? Yeah, and I had I started very low price point and I worked my way up as I figured it out and learned what I do. And I just I had what I saw back then when I was doing it was exactly what you just said that NCI thinks is one of the one of the biggest issues with online coaching is this idea of oh they they buy coaching from you and then you check in once a week with them or it's like very and it's like I was constantly in contact. Mm -hmm. I was uh, constantly having to communicate things because I wasn't getting them in person. I didn't have that hour to impact them, which I was able to do in in person. I had to ha I had yep. to hit more touch points yeah. to get the same kind of messaging across uh, because it, it it wasn't the same. Yeah, they have a connection based coaching model uh, that teaches some of this, and um, they're actually gonna, giving away it for free for a few days. So it's an expensive oh. uh, course that they have. But they're giving it away for a few days to get people in uh, so they can show them like, okay, here's how you can build a successful online coaching business. And, and now that we've been working with them, I've met a lot of these coaches who've built successful businesses doing this. Now, success is measured by, yes, the amount of money they make, but also by the results that their clients get, the how much people value what they do, which you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again. If you want to be successful in fitness monetarily, you have to provide success to your clients in real ways. It's the only way to do it. Otherwise, you'll have this, unless you're like super lack integrity, liar, uh, you know, scumbag. And even then, that's going to be- Flash in the pan. Stressful yes. and constantly try. I mean, that's what happens when all you're concerned about is acquisition over retention. Mm -hmm. That model, in this, in this day and age, it works temporarily because there's so many people out there that you can just keep going through millions and as long as you're converting at a certain percentage, you can run that you could run for a while and have a, a you know what's funny you know, about that successful business for a while. So here's what's funny about that. So I'll, I'll bring it back to the gym business. When I first got into the gym business, we didn't have Yelp and rating systems and internet where someone could look up, hey, what's the process like this over this gym or whatever. So there were a lot of salespeople that had this mentality. We had we worked in a very aggressive environment, to put it lightly, right? So when I first got started with uh, 24 Fitness, this was in the heyday when 24 Fitness was exploding and kind of writing the book on on gym success. They had just purchased or ac acquired uh, a large gym chain themselves. Uh, you know, speaking of which earlier, and there was an aggressive environment because there was a lot of dynamic people. It was growing, and some salespeople thought that you blew people out the door. You either buy a membership or I'm going to you I'm going to blow you out the door. So you have to like literally get up and walk out my office cuz I'm not letting you leave unless you buy something. They had this attitude, right? 
And in some ways, it was successful from a dollar standpoint. But of course, in other ways, it was not successful because Mm -hmm. you just pissed off people as they walked out. But you got away with it for a while because there was no internet or anything with communication. Now, at some point, it started to get back and people started- reputation follows you everywhere now. It started to grow. Now- you can't get away with that like you used to, right? Because wow. of the because of the way people communicate and let people mm-hmm. know and all that stuff. So I think today, yes, you can you can kind of rip people off, but we've already seen it with popular yeah, fitness influencers. They'll come back and sting you, uh, you know, tenfold, and then you're screwed. You're screwed. You totally have screwed. to provide value, and and you know you you want to just focus on that. You don't want to focus on numbers and volume. And I think this is where a lot of these masterminds and these other things go way sideways is like how to get popular, how to get attention, how to get, you know, all the views, all the clicks, all the people yeah. like <laughs> that's like not even your concern at this point. Your concern is value. Your concern is what what it is you're providing these people that will then build upon itself yeah. and then, you know, grow from there. Yeah, when I when I had my my studio, my personal training studio and I opened it, I was in a new town Nobody really knew me in that town. Before that, I managed big box gyms and, and trainers and salespeople and all that stuff. And it took me a couple years to build a relationship. I never spent a dime on advertising after that. I had so many referrals that I kept rising my prices because I would have wait lists because I created a good reputation. And that is the opposite power that you can have when you create so much value. Well, the statistics on that are extremely high too. Like the yes. the conversion rate on a referral is like upwards of like 80%. Oh and my God. Cold lead conversions, like less than 17%. It's like super low. Oh so. yeah. If you're looking to, you know, work out or get fit and healthy and your friend is like, oh, you got to work with so-and-so. They're so good. They're so awesome. Or you just hear about them all the time. Like you don't even, that person doesn't have to sell you anything. You're ready. You show up and like, I'm ready to do this. So, but, and the opposite is also true. You start to build a bad reputation online. You get a bad reputation as a scam artist. That's it. Trying to erase that basically means you have to start. Oh a new yeah, business you're done. You're done once it's done. That's but it. you, you know, and and I do believe. So I still think it's a viable message for these some of these masterminds, like Justin was talking yeah. about, to get away with it and still make money, and that's why they're still around. But that that uh, that life cycle is shortening. Like how long you can get away with? Like you used totally. to be able to get away with it for an extended period of time, where you could probably get the bag and and get out, you know what I'm saying? And still, still have a decent amount of money that you made off of all these people that you fooled or you didn't deliver a good service. But because of of reviews and how fast things move and Reddit, like you just, this life cycle that is getting shorter and shorter. Back in the day, snake oil salesmen. So that's, you know, to get the the term snake oil salesman. That's because back in the day you had these Traveling salesmen. Yeah, they go town to town and they sell the like. (laughs) And they would sell fake cures, right? You know, and snake oil was like a common, you know, one that they would talk about. Snake oil to cure your gout or whatever. But really it was anything. Like this is the cure for baldness. This will make your your husband love you. This will make whatever. And they would get a wagon. This will cure women of hysteria. Yeah. (laughs) That's a that's a vibrator, everybody. Look it up. That's what vibrators are meant for. That was my favorite one. And it actually worked. No. But uh, they would load up a wagon with their fake garbage and they would go town to town because they would rip people off and because there was no way to communicate really quickly or effectively to other towns, they could get away with it. So they go town to town to town to town, Mm -hmm. make up a lot, make a lot of money ripping people off. You rip people off today and the news gets out on the internet, people give you bad reviews or whatever. That's it. You're totally screwed. and, And coming back from that is like, good luck. You have to change your name. Like, a, what was that supplement company that had to change their name? Shreds. Oh, shreds. What's their new name now? You yeah. know, I haven't followed up on those guys to see where they're at. Remember I brought up, um, what's his face? Joey Swall moved to that other one that was called um, Rise. Rise. Yeah. Rise. yeah. I think R- the Z. R- I still love the Z. No, no, no. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's S. It's oh. R-Y-S-E, I think is what oh, it is. Okay. Rise. Okay. I think that's how they spell Rise right. Supplements. But. Remember they had, they got I mean they yeah, got they had some Conor McGregor in there yeah, for a minute yeah, yeah. so I don't like, know wow. where I but I haven't seen an ad one for it for a long time so it'd be interesting to see if it was he's like, probably like why do you guys always pick on me I know. <laughs> <laughs> meanwhile Sorry. I was hanging out with Dan Bilzerian and he's just like these mind pump guys Ugh. yeah <laughs> he's got, he doesn't care <laughs> he's he's giving investment yeah, advice yeah, he's <laughs> still ripping people off he doesn't <laughs> care yeah hey, go get your NFTs guy hey real quick one of our favorite sponsors. Actually, one of the companies we worked with the longest 
is Organifi. Now, one of my favorite products from Organifi is their plant-based protein. So if you're somebody that wants to take protein powder, dairy bothers your stomach, egg protein gives you gas, but you want something that's not going to bother your digestion, that you can tolerate, but also has a good amino acid profile, Organifi's plant-based protein is one of the best. They combine different sources of plant-based proteins to give you a favorable amino acid profile so that you get the anabolic effects of the muscle building effects of protein. It's easy to digest, very, very low instances of intolerance. It's a great product. By the way, they have other plant-based products you can check out. Another one to look up is Pure. It's good for cognitive health. Their green powder is good for overall health, much, much more. So go check them out. And of course, we have a big discount. Go to mindpumppartners.com, find Organifi, click on them, and then use the code MINDPUMP for 20% off. All right, here comes the rest of the show. Our first caller is Ian from Maryland. Ian, what's happening? How can we help you? Wow, this is Sal, Adam, and Justin, right? That's hey, right. we're That's all here, it. buddy. Okay, I watch you guys every day. You guys have been a huge inspiration and have really just changed my life in terms of fitness. So I just want to say thank you guys for that so much. You're uh, welcome, man. Awesome. Thanks for listening. Thanks for that compliment, man. All right, so I'm, I'm just going ahead and dive into my question. So I'm going to give you the, a very slight backstory, then get into exactly what um uh, what I actually called for today. So I started working out in October of 2020. And before that, when I was in school, well, college, I didn't really work out a lot. Uh, I ran high school track, so that's when I worked out. But this was my first time really hitting the gym. And I was just doing a split routine and, you know, making steadily good progress, but not really, you know, it was it was pretty decent. It was slow, slow gains, but it was perfectly fine. And then around March is when I was introduced to you guys and you guys were just a huge help, you know, from the tips you guys gave to the full body workouts, every single thing, every single thing that you guys preach on a day to day basis. Uh, really changed up my whole entire whole entire progress. So I was able to, you know, not only increase strength gains by a lot, uh, also gain a lot of muscle mass too. Because um, I was, uh, I think you, you describe it as an ecto ectomorph. I believe yeah. you say okay. it a lot. Uh, Sal, is that how you say it when you were super skinny with a small body type? Yeah, ectomorph or or uh, wimpy like Adam. <laughs> yeah, so I was. <laughs> so I was. I was an ectomorph, super small, won the game muscle, and that was my priority. And after listening to you guys, you guys, you know, definitely changed up that whole progress. Awesome. So, long story short, I'm at to where a point where I'm at now, where I still want to see strength gains, still want to share plus, still doing positive. But I decided to switch out the workouts because something that I know Justin and you guys talk about consistently is just doing that different plane, working out different planes. So I decided to go ahead and switch from my full body workout routine, which is like a typical five by five to now actually diving into mass performance, which has been great. And I'm at the end of it yeah, right buddy. now. So now I decided to move on to that and go to MAPS OCR. Um, just a quick side note, I did sign up for an absolute, absolute course run because you guys inspired me. It's a Spartan run. But with that being said, though, I still want to be able to maintain my strength gains. And I know that OCR, the way that it's programmed, it's a lot of running involved. So I know that can send competing signals. Signal. So I was asking you guys, uh, what's the best way for, for me to structure MAPS OCR where I can maintain my strength gains or what can I do maybe add in a day or something? I don't know how I should structure it to make sure that I just maintain my strength and my muscle mass and not lose lose it. Yeah, uh, Ian, that's good a good question. question. Mm -hmm. uh, the best answer is to follow MAPS OCRs that's laid out. So every program that we create, the idea is to maximize performance for the specific goal that the program is created for. And part of that is maximizing strength and muscle in relation to the context of the goal. So that means that in OCR training, maximizing strength so long as it contributes to your performance in OCR. So you got to remember something, and <clears throat> strength is uh, can be relatively specific. So a power lifter is going to be stronger than a strongman lifter in specific lifts in a specific context, but a strongman lifter is going to be stronger in a different context, right? And so this is true for all athletes. So strength can be defined in many different ways. I think you're absolutely fine. You're going to go on OCR. Will you lose some strength in your deadlift, squat, and bench? Probably. But you'll gain it in different ways that'll maximize your performance in OCR. And then when you come back. When mm -hmm. you come back, you're just going to be more balanced. And that's really the key, right? Unless you're just looking to work out for a few months and then that's it. But if you're looking at this long term, you're going to see yourself move in and out of different adaptations and goals. And overall, they all contribute to each other to a more 
balanced, functional, strong, uh, healthy body and physique. Now, that's not to say that he can't manipulate <clears throat> OCR or do some sort of a blend of OCR and like anabolic or performance, right? There's nothing that says you can't do that. And <clears throat> the only thing, excuse me, the only thing that is going to happen though, if you do that, right? So, and, and what I'm hearing is is similar to like maybe the experience I had when I did like, a, I did a Tough Mudder, so I did a, something similar, right? And when I did it, all I wanted to do was I wanted to be good enough to beat my two buddies that I was going after. I really didn't. I wasn't trying to be the best OCR guy. Yeah. I wasn't trying. I cared more about my physique and my muscle than I cared about like being a top OCR. As long as you beat your out of shape friends. You're That's right. That's all, I just wanted to beat my out of shape friends because I was talking shit one day and they were making fun of me of being like this meatball buff guy. And I said, listen, I could still get out there on one of these fucking obstacle course races and whoop your ass. And so that was all I wanted to do. And, I, and at the same time, I didn't want to sacrifice all the hard work that I put in to build this physique and, and yeah. put all this muscle on. So I trained uh. a little like OCR, but still kind of trained like a meatball, you know, bodybuilder guy. So the, if if that's kind of where you're at, where you're like, hey, I want to get out there and do this OCR thing. Uh. I just want to prove that I can do it. Then there's nothing that says you can't take part of OCR add in a couple of the runs here and there instead of running as much as we have you running in there. Do some of the obstacle course, like strength-specific stuff for like your forearms, which I think you should do because that's going to benefit you because a lot of the things in OCR is like requires good grip strength. But then still kind of run an anabolic type of routine. And basically what I would do is I would just kind of split the week in half and say, you know, half the week I'm doing like an anabolic full-body routine and then the other half I'm kind of following OCR – now, if you do that, um, you're going to sacrifice how good you're going to be at OCR. But if I'm hearing you correctly, that may be less of a priority to you and your strength and maybe your physique is more important to you. Uh, but what Sal is saying is absolutely true, too. Not the, if you were to follow OCR to a T, let go of the fact that you might lose a little bit of strength in your, your deadlift and squat and all that hard work you put in, and then know that when you get out of your OCR training and you get back to anabolic, you get back to strong, you get back to one of our other programs, you're going to blow right back up. And you, I guarantee within that program, you'll catch up and probably surpass your current PR number. So both options are, mm. are, are completely okay. It really depends what do, you, what do you want from this. Yeah, I think there's, I mean, this is a very common fear. I think there's a lot of paranoia around <clears throat> losing the muscle that you work so hard to achieve, but not realizing that, it, you know, as you go back into that type of training, it's going to come back pretty quickly. It's not something that, um, you know, if you do lose a bit of strength gains just because you're focusing more on endurance, I mean, this is a phase, this is a period where now we're hyper-focusing on something that your body's trying to adapt towards that's, you know, in a different direction, but will, you know, benefit the overall. So I honestly, I think that if, you know, if you're comfortable with it to, to really dive into it and do it exactly how it's laid out and you're going to be just fine, you're going to find that you're going to probably enjoy it. Your body's going to have a different sort of a goal to uh, achieve and acquire a new skill that you can improve upon and then come right back and, you know, it's going to be like, uh, you know, you just interrupted it briefly. Yeah, you know, one more thing, Ian. I'm going to make it more specific now, specifically to you. You sent us a question, a written uh, question. There's got more details than what you said on the podcast. Do you mind if I go through some of what Oh, no, that's up? perfectly fine. I just didn't want to hog up you guys' time. So, yeah, yeah that's No, fine. no, I'm going to read off a few things just and for Doug, the- Doug appreciates that, Ian, just so you know. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go through some yeah. of the stuff just for the, the people listening or watching right now. So, in your written uh, question, you had said that you have- Well, you already told us you have a background in track. Um, so, that tells me that you've done a lot of running. You're probably pretty damn good at it. You weigh 151 pounds- and your bench is 245, your squat is 330, and your deadlift is 405, which are ex solid, solid. exceptional numbers for uh, somebody your size. Because of your track background, your body weight, and your strength, uh, I don't think you're going to have trouble with OCR training. Yeah, uh, I think you're going to be totally fine. In fact, I think you could jump in it right now, and you'll do better than most people with almost no training uh, just because of your background. I mean, your body weight to strength ratio is so high – that you know, cr you know, going across bars and stuff like that with your hands is not going to be as hard as somebody who weighs, you know, two hundred uh, plus pounds. So, 
keep that in mind as well. Uh, you know, consider that you're 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 in better you're, you're in a better position than most people anyway, just because of your training background. The biggest challenge people have with OCR is the running and the stuff that has to do with the grip. Those mm -hmm. are the two most common complaints uh, or you know concerns that people have after they do an OCR race. But you already got the running down. I think you're probably going to be fine with the running. The hand stuff, yeah, I'd say you're probably okay. If you can pull 405 at 151, you're probably going to be okay. Maybe work on some stamina with that. So I wouldn't worry too much. And then the last thing I'll say is this. People are so worried after they gain muscle that if they lose it, it's going to take as long as it took them the first time nah, to gain it back. even easier. It's super fast. Once you gain it, like that's the hard part. The first time is the first time you gain muscle is the hard part. The second, third, fourth, fifth time – Way different. It's way different and way easier. So if you do lose five pounds of muscle, and maybe before it took you four or five months to gain it, you'll gain it back in yeah. a few weeks. I mean, don't, self don't trip. Selfishly, uh, you know, if I was your coach, I, I would actually love to see you run OCR to a T and see with your background and already where your strength to weight yeah, ratio is. Like a top. Uh, yeah, I think you could actually. I think you could probably be a top guy that finishes in his first, you know, first OCR race. So there's a selfish part of me as a coach. I'd be like, let's see what we can, let's see what we could do right. with your, We're gonna hook your you up with Hunter McIntyre. Yeah, your abilities already. I bet we could make you win this goddamn yeah, thing. Yeah, you've so. almost got the perfect body type uh, for o OCR, your body weight and your strength uh, and your background. I yeah. Mean, it's, it's, and with your competitive background, I'm, I'm going to assume you're a competitive individual. Have some fun with it, man. Go out there and, and see what you can do. I, I, maybe it's something you fall in love with and it becomes a new passion. Well, I, I will. Thank you guys so much. And I, I guess I know I'm only fast in one, but a quick question, what should I run after this? What should you run after this? Ooh, well, you've done the map go back to strength I, for sure. Yeah, I would go. Uh, have you done map strong? Strong, yeah. No, I haven't. I was really, that was my next one I wanted to look into. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll send that to you. Yeah. Even if you don't have that, I'll send that over to it's you. A okay? Good follow up. Oh, thank you, thank you guys so much. You got it, man. Thanks for thanks for listening to the show. Appreciate it. Of course, thank you, thank you guys. Have a great day. You, you got too. It. Yeah, I, I get the. By the way, I want to be clear. When I give advice, or when all of us give advice on the podcast. We're in trainer mode. That doesn't mean that we don't uh, feel the same way when it's our own selves. Oh, I know yeah. what. Even now, yeah. at that's my why age, I wanted to share that totally because yeah. I I was exact. Well, I can't say I was exactly like this because he's got a runner background, and I don't I don't know what his motivation of OCR is. But I was in a point. It was literally this was we were playing video games. My two best friends and myself mm. we were playing video games. We were doing this is something. How it starts yeah, exactly right. <laughs> Probably smoking some weed yeah. right, and <laughs> and they taught maybe I was smoking weed, and that's what they were making fun of me, and they were making fun of me that. I, I I didn't have I won't have the endurance because I smoke and now I'm all this like big meathead and I was just like no I'll get out there and smoke your both your asses right now and yeah. that and they're both ex athletes from school when we were kids and stuff like did, that did you end up beating him by the way I did, I did. <laughs> I did. so and shout I, and out to the I, although it was fucking hard I'm not gonna lie like because I did I did have this attitude of like listen I just need to train a little bit you know a little mm -hmm. bit of cardio and get my cardio up there uh, and then I'll be able to and maybe some grip strength stuff because I was pretty I think at that time I was like 230 225 somewhere around there so yeah. I was, I was did kinda, you guys have to dive in that cold water for the plunge for so I did tough Tough Mudder and Tough oh, Mudder, okay. I think, is a little bit easier than Spartan. Spartan's a little more running. Like Tough Mudder, they do, uh, or excuse me, not Tough Mudder. I'm sorry, uh, Muddy Buddy. So oh, they actually buddy. you split half running, half biking, mm. and you have a partner, and you kind of you go mm. back and forth. So, anyways, the Doug, Doug later on Google Muddy Buddy. Look yeah, up, look up <laughs> kids, if you don't mind. It's definitely a genre. <laughs> my point, my point though, of bringing that up so he knows is that I know as a coach. I would want him to run through OCR, stick to it just the way it is, understand that yeah. when he gets out of that, he's going to be totally fine. But I also, his his probably his sentiment, it resonates with oh, me. Oh, totally. Because I didn't do that. I didn't go from Meathead Adam training to like, oh, I'm going to train OCR like because I'm going to go do yeah, and it. And I'll gain the muscle Whoa. back real easy. Yeah, no, I was like, I, I cared so much about what I had built and I, and I didn't want to, even if it was a short regression back and I know better, I was like, eh, I don't need to. I could, yeah. but then- I, my, but I'm, I want to be very clear. My goal wasn't to be the best OCR race. I just needed to beat my two fucking slept friends here. Like that's all I needed to do. Like I did not. I now, hope they listen to the podcast. Now, if I, if I, one of them does, right? <laughs> if I wanted to be the best OCR racer, I would have absolutely committed to training yeah. like an OCR racer, like what we wrote the program. Yeah, for. I, I get it too. It's like you know, I know if I lost five pounds of muscle, it would be easy to gain it back. That still doesn't mean I don't freak out if there's an opportunity to lose five pounds of right. muscle. It still doesn't like, mean you don't want to either. Exactly. I still I get it. I totally get it. But the advice that we're giving is is accurate, even if we don't necessarily take it ourselves sometimes. All right, our next caller is Kyle from Maryland. Hey Kyle, how can we help you? Hey guys, how are you doing? Good. Um, thank, 
Good. Thank you for allowing me to come on here and ask my question. And as always, thank you for all that you guys do for the community. Um, my question is specifically in regards to trigger or mobility days. Um, so I'm currently in phase two of MAPS performance. My second time running performance, uh, I bought at the beginning of last year, ran it then, and then I ran uh, anabolic, finished up anabolic, moved back into performance. Through anabolic, uh, felt great, kind of stuck to the trigger sessions as programmed, moved into performance, and um, on the mobility sessions, uh, I seem to be overdoing it. So when you guys talk about practicing a movement or kind of tailoring your guys' programs towards an individual, would you suggest maybe doing some of these movements such as practicing like a clean or yoke walk towards the end of a foundational day? Or would you suggest keeping it on a, on a mobility day? But when you talk about practicing and like a weight, are we thinking like 20 to 30% of like a, a max or I tend to find myself maybe in like a 50 to 60% weight wise of a max. So having a few more aches and pains through performance. So just looking for some guidance on maybe tailoring it more towards what I continue to like to do with uh, being a little bit more athletic and looking forward to hearing from what you guys have to say. Okay. Well, um, so here, here's a, a, a nice rule of thumb. When you feel like you're overdoing it, your, your body's talking to you and you feel like, oh, man, this might be a little bit too much. Aches, pain, stiffness, you probably right? are. <laughs> you, well, uh, <laughs> when you, if you think you are, you probably yeah, are. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. uh, in other words, you, you are, but here's what I here's the rule of thumb. The first thing that I would uh, change is the intensity. That's mm -hmm. the first the factor, the first component to manipulate. So rather than taking those movements out, just reduce the, the, the intensity way down. Start with that. So you said 20 to 30%. Do that. Mm -hmm. Just bring the intensity way down. And what ends up happening is they end up start, they, they start to become more uh, recovery minded. They start to facilitate recovery more than creating damage. Now, if that doesn't work, then I would start to take movements out and just include uh, more rest. You would, you would do that with what he, so he brought up like carry, yoke carries and what was the other one? Like those are yeah, kind of, those cleans. are Yeah, farmer walks. And, yeah, not really yeah, something. Yeah, farmer walks, yeah. Probably something I would put on my foundational days and then add that to the end yeah. of my workout. Yeah, I, mean, you I could, would say that, but also too, I mean, there's a way to do farmer walks where you're really just hyper focused on your posture and yes, you're doing more sure. of a posture walk. Yes. Um, and I think that that would be a good option for you could carry weights that aren't like super demanding uh, and, and just really just focus on keeping your body under control and great posture uh, and, and stacked well. So um, I think there's a way to do it. And I think that uh, you're on the right track in terms of thinking you need to reduce your intensity and kind of bring that down. Because I honestly, I think there's a lot of value in practicing these movements at a really, really low intensity. Totally. And you see a lot of Olympians do this uh, specifically. So they hone in on the skill of, of that specific movement. So, so Totally. And to, and to comment like on what on the other side of the question, which was, should I put them on foundational days? Technically, doing all the exercises that are hard on one day is going to be more demanding than even splitting them up and doing them more frequently. So I know it sounds sometimes counterintuitive, but it's not. It's actually worse to do all the intense stuff on one day uh, rather than just lowering the intensity and doing those movements on the following day. So that's where I would start. I would start do exactly what Justin is saying. There's a lot of value in those movements with light weight. There's tons. And you just really, you're just, and if you ever watch, I don't think, I don't know if Justin's ever done a video on this, but I'll see him sometimes doing these in the studio mm -hmm. where he's doing a farmer walk and he's holding like, you know, 40 pound dumbbells, which is, you know, he could easily do these with 120 pound dumbbells, but he's walking right. with like super purpose, very focused, you know, uh, posture is perfect. Mm -hmm. It's heel toe, it's lined up, it's activated core. And so he's making a lot out of that movement, but the damage on the body is super low. And in, in many cases, it's actually it actually facilitates recovery. Are are all those movements in performance? Mm -hmm. <laughs> all of them are not the the 
power cleans, but uh, high pulls are. And I, I suggest actually to a lot of athletes to replace that the second time you run it. Uh, with cleans, if that's a so focus to, of yours. So to me, that's what I would do with some of these movements that you like doing. Is I would I would find exercises inside performance and replace it on my foundational days, and then stick to, solely to mobility on mobility days. Yeah, that's another that's another. I good mean, option, that's yeah. that's what I, I would I would find movements that are in performance that you that are that you could interchange some of these movements in there, and I'd put it on my foundation. I still would take the advice though of having days where. I go light, yeah, and because I do this right, so I'll, every once in a while you'll see me kick my shoes off. I'll go barefoot, and you'll see me do these carries with a lightweight, and I'm just I'm I'm paying attention to the way my my foot hits the ground, and I'm like mm -hmm. actually like gripping my toes totally. on the grass while I walk, and I'm thinking about my posture. My chest is high. My I'm tucking my chin, like, yeah. and I'm just I'm thinking about every every part of the movement, and I'm f more focused on how I move than I am how strong I am. But then maybe I'll come back on the next week and I'm like, you know, now, now I want to test my strength a little bit. Mm -hmm. So then I do want to carry some heavy weight. If When I do those, I definitely want to replace it with something else that's probably intense inside the foundational days and it would go there. And I, I, I mean, this is, this is all personal, right? So this is, this isn't, you have to do it this way, but I like in performance, I like sticking to the, to mobility work like that. It's switching that mindset of, no, that's a good point. it's just, this is all about, you know, mobility and reco active recovery. And I don't like blending my active recovery type of mindset with something that is you know, challenging like that, like that where I'm going to be pushing the intensity mm -hmm. or even an exercise that I like to push the intensity because then I'm, I'm more likely to do that where it's like, it's a, like, just like, you know, we tease Sal sometimes about his music and stuff, but this is where like I even shift my <laughs> shift my music right oh, like, I do that. Yeah. like it's mobility right. day. like I don't I don't want to throw Lamb of God or Rage Against the Machine on when I'm doing mobility no I'm gonna do so like that's when I listen to my hip hop right I'm gonna listen to something kind of easy country listening. don't lie yeah, our country yeah. that's right yeah. so I'll listen right. to something like that nice. and it's a whole mindset right that's my mobility days are you know and I had to do this because I, I come from a place of the overtraining and and pushing the intensity all the time and always wanting to see what I can do and so you know when I go into my mobility days I don't like to 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 muddy that or convolute it with some other type of movement that I'm going to be more likely to yeah. push intensity and you know consider this too Kyle if a movement is too much then that means it has no value so what you don't want to do is get stuck in the oh man I don't want to skip that exercise because it's such a valuable exercise well if that exercise is too much it's not valuable. So, and I think we, right. sometimes we do that. We think, oh, I don't want to skip cleans. I don't want to skip farmer's walk. Those are so good. And they are when they're appropriate. When they're not appropriate, they're not valuable. So that's the mentality that you have to have when you train. But honestly, intensity. If people just manipulated intensity uh, appropriately, you, you could get away with doing a lot of stuff. You really could. So you don't yeah. necessarily... And, and what Adam said about mindset is totally true. But you can also do this. Uh, and I've done this before. I've done traditional exercises, let's say traditional bodybuilding exercises with the me mobility mentality. So like if I'm going to do squats to build my muscle, I might have 315 on there, 365. If I'm doing it for mobility, it's 135. I'm going slow. I'm Pausing sitting at the at bottom. The bottom yeah. yeah. I'm challenging my range of motion. Now it's like a mobility movement. Does that make sense? Right. Yes. Okay. Do you have maps prime pro or prime by the way? Cause I think those are really Yes. Helpful. Okay. okay good. Yes, I do. All right. You know, there's nothing that doesn't say also that on those other days, uh, you just take you take some individualized correctional exercise mobility movements from Prime Pro, and doing those uh, in replace of the mobility sessions that are in performance, just to make it more individualized. That's also an option. I also want to just commend you for for having the awareness too of knowing that you're probably overreaching a bit because your body's trying to talk to you. It's it's amazing to me. Uh, how, how many people, including myself, ignore those signals, you know, and want to just keep pushing through it. And so the fact that you already recognize that your body's kind of talking to you, I need to modify or change yep. something. Um, it's, it's the right question you're asking. Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you very much. No problem, Kyle. Thanks for calling in. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Thank you. You know, it's it's a it's a little frustrating when they have the programs. I want to give them for free. <laughs> <laughs> so I didn't know. I, I didn't. I guess I didn't realize that we we programmed all of those into performance. I'm Not, trying to picture where they're. Yeah. Where they're, no, so we actually have those in some of the mobility days, and they're specifically 
for um, like like farmer walks, for instance, like so athletes. Sp- yeah, it's for athletes. It's also supposed to be light. It's not supposed to be like a super demand. That's why I don't remember because it's not programmed yeah. into foundational. Dude, I didn't want because we have a couple different versions of mobility sessions in there. Yeah, and I'll tell you, man, uh, farmer walks and overhead carries program, huh? and, and these movements. It's okay, I'm diving deep into yeah. these. <laughs> those, uh, those movements done light versus heavy, totally different. No, you're it's right. It's such a different experience. It's such and it's such a great thing that I think most people don't don't do no. and and it, it was a it was a great opportunity to highlight that because i've seen all of us do that i've seen yeah. all of us mm-hmm. have a day where you're doing something really really light that traditionally is done yeah. with a lot of load yep. and and that's what it what it looks like i, I love to kick my shoes off on that's that exactly what i was gonna bring up yeah i do that barefoot it's yes. the perfect time to do yeah, that yeah i do yes. it naked but okay so here's the yeah, i don't of do, course it. So, you do just to give an example for someone listening or watching that's like well what is the what is the weight difference between the two because that's a big question right what do you mean lower intensity? Do I drop the weight in half? I'll give you an example. If I do trap bar uh, uh, farmer walk, so that's a trap bar deadlift bar, and I'll do a farmer walk. If I'm going heavy, I'll go up to 405, 455. That's the heavy version. When I'm going light, one, it's it's 135, yeah. 100 pounds. That's how big the difference is, I mean, the, but what we're talking about. The truth is the, the weight should not – be that actually relevant. Well, I'm saying it's, that you know just saying? so it's, people it's, know. It's so light. Yes. I almost think it's like, I just want to be holding it's something. More about so, controlling your body. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So it's like, you know, you pick a weight that the thing that, you know, when you stop your set, it's not because it, it got too heavy for you to no. hold. You know what I'm saying? So absolutely. Our next caller is Dan from Alberta. Dan, what's going on, man? Hey guys. Uh, first, I wanted to say uh, uh, thanks for the opportunity to talk to you guys. And uh, thanks for all the uh, content you put out, I found it really helpful. Um, what I was wondering from uh, you guys is, how would you recommend programming for a strongman style event? Like specifically, what is the best way to incorporate carries, sled, drags, uh, and pushes? Uh, I've done a couple competitions uh, over the past few years. My performance in these events have been pretty mediocre. And after uh, three years, I'm having a hard time just improving my performance. I find the weights easy to move, but uh, what I, my difficulty is, is uh, lowering my time for each event. Mm. Last year, I tried uh, doing MAPS anabolic followed by performance and then uh, event specific training, and uh, I found uh, not much improvement. So I'm just not sure what I'm doing wrong. Okay, Dan, I got, I got the. Sometimes <laughs> wow. every once in a while, we get a question where I have the perfect answer. <laughs> I know. It's like, <laughs> wow, it's weird because right. we literally created uh, this program <laughs> yeah, for you that you're <laughs> hoping you, for. Do you have Map Strong? Uh, I do not know. Okay. We're going to send that to you. So uh, since it was written for li- exactly what this yeah, is. Yeah, so <laughs> we wrote Map Strong with uh, Robert Oberst. He's a uh, professional strongman competitor. It was literally written strongman style training. That's the best program that we have for exactly what you're asking for. So we're going to send that over to you. But uh, because the answer is so easy and fast, let's get a little bit uh, deeper. Let's talk about your. Well, your, let's your, go ahead. Let's talk about what is something he said specifically that I think is very unique to this program uh, that is going to benefit him tremendously, and that's the uh, work sessions. Oh yeah, that's yeah. that's what this because for. he he just talked about how the weight and his strength seems to be fine, but his he's not the improving his time. Isn't quite. There. Yeah, so I mean, the work capacity that you get from training those work sessions is, I guarantee, every one of your events you you're faster at. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. it's it's literally perfect for what you're asking for. But the other side of the question I was going to ask it has to do a little bit more with your nutrition. I want to make sure that that's not holding you back. Are you tracking your food and fueling your body properly? I know strongman competitors benefit from having a little bit more size and weight uh, on their bodies. And so if, you're, if your nutrition isn't fueling that, it can definitely make things a little bit more challenging. Are you tracking your food? Uh, I do not track my food uh, currently, no. Okay. What's your body weight and how tall are you? Uh, I'm 6'2". Right now I'm uh, uh, sitting on a heavy side for me at 215. Okay. Normally uh, when I'm ready for competition, I'm down to like 190, 195. Okay. So I would track your protein. Let's get you at least 200 grams of protein and maybe double that in carbohydrates and then you can make up the difference uh, with fat in your diet to hit the calories that you're looking for. And try to break that up throughout the day just because it's easier to digest. That's a, it's a lot of food. And then Map Strong, dude. Map Strong is going to be perfect for what you're looking for. You should see some performance gains 
with Map Strong because it was literally designed uh, to help people do better at strongman competitions. And then people who don't compete, who they when they follow Map Strong, they just get the the muscle and aesthetic benefits, and typically looks like a well developed back, mm-hmm. glutes, uh, traps, and shoulders. Those are the the muscles that tend to get developed the most uh, in that program. Great. That, that sounds awesome. Thank you. No problem, Dan. We'll send that over to you. All right. Yeah. Dan's been listening to the show for, thought, for two episodes. <laughs> I, I thought we've been trolled right there. I was yeah. like... <laughs> <laughs> no, I, yeah, you know, um, actually, okay. So this is a good topic to kind of add to. Or he's really smart and just wanted to. Prove yeah, it. that's yeah. that. That yeah. was my other. Isn't thought. that great? Yeah, you know, he, I really, he knows Sal's like. So yeah, but you wouldn't happen Santa to know Claus any good ideas. Like, yeah, you know, I'm trying to get aesthetic looking, and I also would like some performance, and I'd like to feel more anabolic. We catch Do you have on this. to be another person calling. Yeah. In, no, you know, um, uh, this uh, this is a good topic because it's when you're looking for performance in a specific either sport or in a specific way. Nothing is going to improve your performance like training specifically for that. So you can get general improvements in performance. Like a squat is going to – getting better at a squat is going to improve your legs, general performance. But if you want to get really good at sprinting, you're going to want to do specific exercises uh, for sprinting. In this case, it was strong man competitions. Mm -hmm. So, you know, anabolic is going to help a little bit. Performance is going to help a little bit. Uh, especially if he hasn't trained before. Yeah, but, but they have to lift heavy and they have to move uh, with the weight, yeah. which is a whole another you know dynamic component to strongman lifting, and also rounded back type uh, yes. lifting. And so we have all of that is incorporated in that program. Yeah. So it's the perfect yeah. one. And I will say this: this is and and I did not expect this until I followed Map Strong, and then I said, like, "Oh, I can't wait to see what the reviews look like." It's one of the most popular programs that we have mm-hmm. uh, for both men and women, but women Surprising love women. Yeah, it's because of all the, all the posterior it. chain focus. That's yes, why. the yeah. posture, Very the heavy butt. On the posterior uh, chain. Yes, it's, and it's such a popular. It's probably one of my top three uh, favorite maps programs, just for overall muscle uh, and strength. Our next caller is Mike from Delaware. What's up, Mike? How can we help you? Hi guys, I've really enjoyed your podcast and. Um, Wanted to thank you for having me, uh, allow me to ask a question. I, uh, uh, just a quick background. I'm 53, going to be 54 this summer. Um, came up on my fifties in the worst shape of my life and decided to, uh, set some pretty audacious bucket list goals. Um, and one of those was centered around fitness. And I quickly discovered, knew about myself if I didn't set a a big goal, I probably wouldn't stick with it. So I went from nothing to setting a goal to win a over 50 bodybuilding competition. Oh, and I'm happy to report that uh, within with three years of dedicated work and some great help from folks like Craig Capruso and my trainer at the YMCA, I achieved my goal. Good job. Right on, man. Hell yeah. So I, it's it's been a really fun ride. I've, I feel great. I'm in the probably second best shape of my life. Maybe the best shape was when I was in the military, but, uh, um, I achieved that goal and I sent my photos into the, the judge and said, what do you think? How could I do better? And uh, not really thinking that I'd want to do another competition per se, but, uh, he said, you know, if you put on three to four pounds of lean muscle, you'd be competitive on a national stage. So that just, uh, totally reset my paradigm i guess and now i'm considering prepping to do another competition and um uh i don't know if that's a realistic goal for somebody my age um i uh i, I feel great about what i've achieved but uh i went from like 210 and 23 percent body fat to the day i walked on stage i was about 164 and by my little resistance scale i was somewhere around 11 percent body fat um but uh i don't know if i can i've I've done pretty good at shredding but i I don't know if i can get bigger or not yeah okay that's a that's a that's a pretty good question uh doug just pulled up your photos look really good by the him right there yeah that's him right there wow fantastic yeah uh, by the way uh say hi to craig for us a good friend of ours yeah um okay so is this pot first off i want to say something about bodybuilding judges they're always going to say something like that. <laughs> Keep you coming back. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, be very careful. Don't get caught in the trap of you know sacrificing your health uh, for a trophy because it's 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 an easy thing to do, especially once you start winning. Now, is it possible to gain three to four pounds of muscle? It totally is. It is. It's going to be hard. 
uh, but it's totally possible. Um, and you did indicate in the written part of your question that you're doing this without any hormone treatment or anything like that. It's totally natural. Is that correct? Yeah. And, and, uh, you mentioned Craig, I, I don't want to overstep anywhere. He's been invaluable to me in this process has done a great job. And, and he's, he suggested I look into that, that, and he also put me on to your podcast. I've, I've become a, a mind pump junkie. I listen to it when I'm driving all the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, and, uh, uh, so, I, I just am hesitant and I'm, I'm seeking, uh, information, I yeah. guess. Uh, no, that's a good I'm, question. What, you know what, Mike, uh, we have a free, uh, uh, hormone forum that is, you know, managed by actual hormone doctors. It's, uh, it's, I believe it's my, is it mind pump hormones, uh, on Facebook. So you can go there, join there. You can ask any questions. Now I'm going to give you what I what they've said before on this particular question, but I do want to make sure you know I'm not the doctor. I'm not a hormone specialist. Now, what they have said is that you can go on testosterone replacement therapy, ther therapy, go back off, and you'll go back to where you were before with the right kind of treatment. So a lot of people believe once you go on, you have to stay on. That's not necessarily true. Now, my advice is this. I don't think it's a good idea to go on hormone replacement therapy just to build more muscle. I think it's more of a improve your quality of life thing. If you get your hormones checked and you feel good and you're not bad and you're doing okay, um, I don't necessarily see why any why you would need to go on them. Now, would you gain muscle on hormone replacement therapy? Um, yeah, I mean, if it raises your testosterone, it could probably help. But if, it's, if your quality of life is great and you're healthy, um, I don't necessarily see the need for it, especially not for, you know, bodybuilding. I really don't see the, the value in it for uh, for, you know, competing, uh, you know, on stage, especially if that's not your, your absolute passion. I do think it's totally possible to gain three to four pounds of muscle. You just started working out a few years ago, three to four pounds is totally possible by manipulating your training and your diet and really fine tuning things with everything. And maybe the pre-contest diet portion, working on that a little bit. And, and then last thing I'll say, and Adam's, you know, he said this many times and I'd love his input on this. Sometimes the way you, how lean you come in or how conditioned you look makes you look easily three to four pounds more muscular. So you don't necessarily have more muscle. You just got to look like you have more muscle. Yeah, Mike, you, <clears throat> you you sound like a client that I would love to train because you seem like the type of guy that if I, if whatever I tell you to do, you're going to follow uh, to a T uh, based off of the discipline it takes to to get yourself in the kind of shape you did and the time you did it, which I think is is awesome. I think if you were my client... I would actually just kind of challenge the way you're thinking as far as like, you know, we can stay in this bodybuilding phase and, and we can bring you an even better physique the next time around. And um, I had a lot of fun doing that myself. I did six shows over the course of three years uh, and had a blast doing it. And uh, I'm very competitive. So what turned into a thing of first proving, can I do it? Uh, and then I did it. I got on stage. Uh, and place like fifth my very first show which gave me kind of the bug and because I'm competitive I then turned it into okay let me get on a national stage see if I can do that I did that uh, then I took my first first place show and then I went pro and so it became this like uh, very very fun challenging uh, time of my life that I enjoyed now I also sacrificed a lot of other things during that time um, I probably wasn't the best uh, you know partner uh, I know both in business and in my relationship because I was so consumed with myself and my sport and what I was doing. Um, if you have that, uh, that that freedom to do that and maybe you don't have the, the same type of responsibilities that were today that you maybe you had 10, 20 years ago or whatever, then why not? We could have we could do this. We could definitely bring you into the next the next show, you know, leaner and tighter, a couple pounds more muscle on you and do that. Now, if you were allowing me to be coach and say, you know, what do you think, Adam? I'm at 50-something years old. I just brought, put myself in some of the best shape of my life. What's another good goal for me to do? I would love to make you run through something like a, a MAPS powerlift, and let's let's see what we can do with your strength. Yeah. Or I would love to put you through MAPS performance and say, you know what, dude? Let's let's Mike. Let's see how how much we can improve your mobility. Let's let's check out your squat. Let's check out your debt. Let's check out some of your movements, and let's let's see if we can improve some of these these movements and get you not only looking the best you ever looked in your life, but now let's start looking at the the best movement or feeling the best you've ever felt in your life. And I would take your same your same attitude and discipline that you obviously applied to competing, 
uh, bodybuilding, and I would want you to apply that in maybe a direction towards bodybuilding or maybe a direction towards powerlifting or strength, right? So uh, if you allowed me that, right, if you allowed me to intervene on on your your goals and what you would do, what you're open to doing, that's where I would push you because I think you would you would overall benefit the most from that. But if if you're focused on the bodybuilding thing, uh, to your original question, absolutely we can put on three to five pounds of muscle. We could do that naturally. In fact, especially a, a body that's been as lean as you've been, coming back the other direction uh, is some of the best muscle gains I've ever had. Is after I've dieted really hard for a show, I reintroduce calories, I change my programming up a bit, and uh, I guarantee muscle is going to come on your body even at your age. So long as I, I you know, hormones are are fine, which I'm assuming they probably are if your body's responding the way it is. Um, so, you know, the answer is really is diving into what is it, Mike, you really want to get out of this. And if if bodybuilding is something you find you're passionate about right now, uh, absolutely, we can go after that and bring an even better physique on the next show. Uh, but if you were open to suggestions and ideas, um, I would want to push you in the direction of let's get let's get really hyper focused now on mobility for a while, or hey, let's work on strength and see what we can do with yeah, with your such, discipline there. Such great advice, uh, Adam. Mm-hmm. I 100 percent agree. And then as far as the hormone stuff, in your question, you asked about um, in, you know chances of cancer with increased testosterone. The best studies now show that your your cancer risk actually goes up with low testosterone, not with high testosterone. Of course, we're talking about within the range of what's considered you know healthy. We're not talking about super physiological bodybuilding doses. Nobody knows what the hell that will do um, long-term. But again, we're not doctors, so if you go on that forum, you can ask questions, and then if you want a consultation, you can actually talk to an expert and then ask those questions. We're not the ones that are, uh, you know, we're not qualified really to answer anything, any questions uh, along those lines, but you're in a pretty damn good place, Mike. At your age, uh, getting to where you did, um, what Adam said is great, man. I think if you did that, if you went mass performance or powerlift, I think it would be great for your body. It's very different than what you were doing before. And that might be what actually puts that muscle on your body because it's so so much more strength and performance focused. And if you don't have those programs, uh, we can send that over to you, Mike. Oh, gosh. That, it, no, I don't. It, it, and I don't want to ask for, for that. I mean, I, I this has just been really, really helpful. Just And Adam, I love what you're doing. It, 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 I, I don't want to take – this was part of a larger goal I have, which um, – part of the reason I've enjoyed uh, your show so much. Um, um, I'm an ag guy. I grew up a farm boy and I was still working agriculture. And my, my real dream is to um, give a TED talk. And my TED talk was to say how I won an over 50 bodybuilding competition, eating GMOs, whole milk and eggs. <laughs> and <I've enjoyed> <laughs> um, so I've enjoyed your, like the Z-Biotics episodes and things like that. And um, so much of what you say just makes sense. And uh, I, I um, uh, so like I say, the competition piece, I, I like where you're going with that, Adam. That that makes a lot of sense, your suggestions, because the competition was, I, 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 don't, I don't have a burning desire to go back on stage, but I am very competitive. And when they kind of threw that carrot out there, I was like, well, I wonder – I like pushing myself for something uh, that I never thought I could do. That's I could, I could, I could tell, yeah. Mike. Let's I could redirect tell, that. Yeah, yeah, I could tell, and that's why I said you would Dude, be, sign up for a powerlifting think, competition. Yeah, you're one of those clients that I used to love to get a hold of. You're very rare. Um, and when I get a hold of a client like you, I would try my best to influence you on what, what I thought would be, would be best for you. And if you allowed me to do that right now, that's kind of the direction I think I would push you considering that your main goal isn't just to be the best bodybuilder in the world. As you, you basically set that goal for yourself and fucking crushed it. And now I'd be challenging. All right, let's look for some other goals and other pursuits within, you know, health and fitness and see what you, what else yeah. you could do. I bet a powerlifting competition would be a blast. I bet you'd have a lot of fun doing that. And they have age categories for that and of course weight categories so it's a pretty you know somewhat level <laughs> playing field I, I bet that would be a lot of fun yeah and even if you didn't get and compete on on stage in that i think just competing with yourself saying okay let's check where your your deadlift your squat your bench is and let's write a program and follow it and dial in your diet and let's see how much we can improve that over the next three to six months okay. we'll set we'll send those over to you mike okay gosh guys thank you so much um thanks for what you're doing um Really enjoy your show and uh, keep it up. And thanks, thanks for answering my questions and giving me some ideas. Yeah, no awesome. problem. And send Craig our love. Thanks yeah, yeah. Keep in. us yeah. posted, Mike. Let us know how you do. I sure will. Thank, thanks so much. Thank you. 
That's a great position to be in. Oh, I love. I love yeah. You could tell. I could tell. This is like my, one of my favorite type of clients to train right here. Yep, you know? totally. So, I mean, you got the discipline at at his age to put himself yeah. in that kind of shape uh, and to get up on stage like that and perform that well. Like uh, that, that. That's one of the things I love uh, uh, that I loved about competing is and why I know what we've I ragged on it a lot early on in the show uh, when we first started, but. It did have tremendous value as far as the uh, one disciplining yourself to be that consistent for that long of a period of time to get there, and then you learn so much about your own body and and diet and how it responds to things by going to that level. That's why I was trying to after you said mass powerlift, it like so many bells went off for me. Oh, oh yeah. it'd be so perfect. That makes so much sense. It's competitive. It's objective, right? It's not judged. It's yeah. you lift the weight or you don't, and it's a different direction than bodybuilding. Right. Nobody cares how you look. It's all about how much you lift, and I it's bet not about that depriving would... yourself, you know, yes, nutritionally. Dude. Yeah, it's now it's like let's really add into that and build the muscle. So exactly what he needs too, to, if he wanted to go back to uh, bodybuilding. I bet you that's what puts the three four pounds muscle on him. Yeah, that's what, that would be my guess. Well, that's kind of where I was thinking too. Is like it, he wouldn't have to abandon this whole idea of maybe even competing again. Yeah, I it mean, could be down the road. Yeah, go run, go chase strength for a while, get really good at that, try and improve that, and it'll only feed into his physique if he wants to go. Go compete maybe next year. Sometime. Totally. Hey, look, if you like our podcast, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out all of our guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any fitness goal. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So Justin is at mindpumpjustin. I'm at mindpumpsal and Adam is at mindpumpadam. Adam. 